welcome to Medica Cardia Talks 19. Today we are going to talk about trans catheter aortic valve replacement TAVR, the new insights or newer insights or the newer indications and much more advances in the procedure itself. So with me, my colleague, director of Cardiac Cath Lab, Dr. Dilip Kumar is going to share his views. And now we have got proven data and results to support and substantiate that TAVR is a very effective modality of treatment for severe aortic stenosis. But with time, as science advances, similarly the technology of TAVR also advanced. So today we are going to have uh, ideas, for example, what are the new things happening in TAVR. For example, we know that severe aortic stenosis patients, because of the disease process, because of the advanced uh, atherosclerotic process, they are elderly individual, they are very prone to get a cerebrovascular accident. So when you are actually deploying the valve in the aortic valve, there could be a possibility of cerebrovascular accident. Let us hear from Dr. Dilip Kumar that what are his thoughts, what are the current data uh, about the Protecta uh, device in TAVR called Protecta TAVR. Dr. Dilip Kumar, please. Thank you, sir. And uh, hello, everyone. So. Uh, rightly pointed out by uh, Professor Chakravarti, in the transfer aortic valve, we have come a long way. But one thing which is really uh, disturbing uh, us for uh, right from beginning of uh, tower therapy is the stroke. And we all know uh, other complications can be managed, but stroke is one uh, you know complication which is really, really disabling, disabling and uh, very disheartening for the doctor, the physician and, uh, and uh, uh, very unrewarding uh, for the family. We had a very, very large trial, uh, Protect Tower trial, which was exceptionally large trial, 3,000 patients. Oh. Uh, we haven't seen, uh, uh, you know, much of trials with 3,000 patients in uh, TAVI. This Protect Tower trial uh, gave us some uh, real, real challenge how to interpret this. So they showed uh, there was no significant difference in the primary endpoint. So there was no difference in the incidence of a stroke within 72 hours or discharge, that, that, uh, which was the primary endpoints. But they did show some significant difference in the uh, disabling strokes. Oh, but then that could is that is probably even worse than the death. Yes. Because disabling strokes, something people used to cope with for years together, right. which is unacceptable. So that is that is what the interpretation is. Even if we uh, you know prevent one disabling stroke in one twenty five towers, which is the NNP for you know preventing one disabling stroke, this is fair enough for us. Of this course. Is enough for us. Of course. This is this is worse than death, which we all uh, you know appreciate. It matters. It, it is meaningful. So, what are what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So, uh, I take this trial as a non-negative trial, rather as a positive trial, and uh, we can pick and choose those patients, especially where uh, the, the more the high risk the patient is, the chance of stroke is higher. Especially in higher risk group, patient with a history of CVA, we should go rather with a, a you know a, a central protection. This is this is what I feel. So, if, so in that case, so in which subgroup of patients of severe aortic stenosis would you recommend or would you sort of use a, you know, this special device or cerebral protection device in your practice? Yeah, I think uh, especially those patients with severe calcification, uh, with uh, uh, falling in high risk category, a low risk patients with a uh, uh, you know a tricuspid valve with a moderate calcium, probably I will. Right. So, uh, have we used any such uh, protection device in our TAVR experience? One case we had uh, used a, a spider filter. Right. We did not have a sentinel, uh, you know, sentinel device that time, sentinel device. And we used a bilateral uh, spider filter from uh, the groin, some of arteries. And, we, and the patient is doing well. He had a history of uh, two episodes of stroke. Oh, right. Yes. So, was, this is probably uh, more than pressing indication. Uh, two or two, three years follow up now? Uh, we have a two and a half years follow up this patient. Uh, one thing uh, uh, you know, regarding stroke in uh, tower is really intrigued is we don't get uh, stroke you know incidences just after tower within okay. two hours. We keep on uh, you know having this stroke uh, till thirty days, and that is that is what uh, is it becomes more challenging, and and that is a controversy whether during the you know procedure if you put a device whether it is going to give you a significant benefit or not. But definitely, if you reduce disabling stroke significantly, I, I would go for it. Exactly. So, from protector TAVR, now I think there is a new concept coming up. So, you all know that TAVR is being used for severe aortic stenosis. But 
we know that aortic valve can also be affected by severe aortic regurgitation when the valve is leaking. And so far we knew that for aortic regurgitation, surgical aortic valve replacement would be an option. So as science advances, technology takes over, nowadays people are actually thinking of replacing the valve by transcatheter in severe aortic regurgitation. So with that, the new technology is coming up. Let us again uh, discuss about the TAVR in aortic regurgitation. Dr. Dilip Kumar, what are your thoughts? Yes. So we have uh, got phenomenal uh, you know, results with the TAVR in asymptomatic patients. And in 10 years, we have come such a long way. Agreed. And the next uh, fort is, uh, you know, to be conquered is severe aortic regurgitation, aortic incompetence. And the basic pro problem lies there is large annulus and no calcification. But to hold the valve there. To hold the valve. And the, the valve, th you know, technology, which is Jena valve. Uh, this uh, is valve is made and designed for uh, aortic regurgitation patients. Oh, right. In what way? And because this valve has got uh, two hooks, uh, two level hooks. One, uh, you know, grasps at the uh, aortic valve level and right. second at the annular level. So, it, uh, and that's why the uh, aortic valve and the, you know, the annulus holds the valve. But the, for aortic regurgitation, the valve area is bit bigger, isn't it? So, these hooks are sufficient enough to hold the valve in that position while the valve, the valve is leaking? Yeah, right. So, initial results are really, really good with this valve and it gives you exceptionally, you know, uh, brilliant hemodynamics. The, the kind of uh, aortic valve area uh, after the procedure uh, which has been uh, seen in the initial results is really, really exceptional and, 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 and chances of paravalvular leak is very less. Right. And a large trial called NI AR trial is ongoing. And so, from the initial results, how many patients the data we have of severe aortic regurgitation undergoing uh, TAVR? So these, 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 these are very few patients, very few patients. Uh, the, the, uh, the only big trial which is you know on the way that is randomized control trial that is a line AR trial and we are all looking for that trial uh, when it gets finished we'll get a concrete answer that whether uh, the uh, journey of uh, you know tower in uh, aortic regulation will happen the same way as it happened out expenses are you therefore optimistic that even the we the cardiologist interventional cardiologist would be able to replace aortic valve in severe aortic regurgitation by transcatheter uh, mechanism so, uh, we all, even, you know, in fact, all cardiologists have an optimistic view and uh, we are really, really looking forward uh, for this device in a valve to be clicking in uh, AR, the kind of design the valve has and uh, the initial results which is showing. I am really, really, very, very hopeful. Yeah, it really sounds good and I am also hopeful that now the entire aortic valve surgery is going to uh, to come to the interventional cardiologist, both severe aortic stenosis as well as aortic regurgitation and even the mixed uh, a set of lesion like aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation in combination nowadays or maybe in not too distant future the cardiologist would be able to uh, take care of those valves by transcatheter valve replacement and now a very much more interesting area we know we are we are aware that there are a lot of patients of severe aortic stenosis they are asymptomatic the first time is sudden death we are aware of that and the chances of dying of severe aortic stenosis yearly is about 25 percent, isn't it? So, but many of them may not be symptomatic to start with. So, is there any data that how do we address or is there any sort of guideline that asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis, is there any role of TAVR yeah. today? So, uh, I look at this, uh, you know, with uh, two, three perspectives. One is how to, uh, you know, ask the patient about symptoms. A patient is coming to you, it means there is some problem. And they will come with an eco Doppler report showing gradient of 70 or maybe 72, more than that. And and, and you ask, and uh, many of the patients they deny that no, 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 I am all right. So how will you take on these patients? So these are some gray areas. So patient has to be symptomatic or has to be a LV dysfunction to qualify for uh, this therapy. But we feel that the early some of the surgical results are there where they have been you know, doing this uh, procedure in severe aortic stenosis and they found good results. Right. And, and that is all philosophy. Before the patient lands up in bigger trouble or the patient becomes overtly symptomatic, these patients with severe aortic stenosis at least. So that is surgical replacement? Yeah. But do you have any experience of transcatheter replacement? Yeah. So there is a trial called early tower. Right. This is ongoing and there are some low risk population where the symptoms are not very classical and, and with these, you know, initial uh, 
ideas and some uh, statistics or data from these kind of patients. They have, they have seen that there can be some possibility and they have got good results with that. So early tower will settle the issue maybe. Sure. So as you have seen that severe uh, aortic stenosis who are asymptomatic, but we know that those patients where rejection fraction is less than 50%, that itself is an indication anyway. So we are not considering that group. We are actually considering asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis with preserved ejection systolic function uh, or uh, systolic function may be an uh, indication for TAVR in at some stage, although we have to wait to get the data from the trial. But I have to say, if I really look at the journey of TAVR, probably in good old days, maybe in about five years ago, people used to think that the which patients are unsuitable for surgical replacement, valve replacement like SAVR, should go for TAVR. Nowadays, the concept has changed. People are actually looking for suitability of TAVR. Patients who are suitable for TAVR, they are going for suitable. Who are unsuitable for TAVR may go for SAVR. And what is the, to, just to, before we conclude, I would like uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar to share with my audience that what is our experience as of today and what is our future plan for this TAVR program in our institute. So it was only our good luck that we haven't got any uh, stroke in our patients, we haven't got any mortality. So till now we have got 100% results and probably maybe uh, we are choosing right patients and uh, uh, so we have a, uh, we have used both uh, balloon expandable and self expandable uh, valves and, and uh, results have been really, really phenomenal. So we are, we are pretty hopeful to take our tower program in a big manner and we are excellent. Available. So as you, as you know that although the, our numbers are, may not be quite big um, matching with any big centers of the, uh, in, in the world, but still whatever numbers we have done, there is no mortality, no major complication and all the patients are on follow-up and doing very well and we are hoping to take this program in a broader perspective, in a broader manner so that more and more patients can come in and get their aortic valve sorted out by our colleagues, by our interventional cardiologist to get a valve replacement through catheter, not by any surgical incision, not by knife, but through catheter. With that, we finish our Medical Cardio Talk 19, I am sure Keep watching Medica Cardio Talk and we are we will be there with you all the time and we'll try to share our experience with new knowledge and new understanding of cardiovascular advancement with you all. See you again. Thank you.